I got a preseason battle you should be watching in the next couple of weeks on a Wednesday, Locked on Lions. You are Locked on Lions, your daily Detroit Lions podcast. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. What's happening, everybody? Matt Derry with you. It is a Wednesday edition of Locked On Lions right here on the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. It's Wednesday, August 2nd, and Thursday, August 3rd. Lions back in the practice field today. No pads, but did have a morning session. A lot came out of it, which we will get to today right here on Locked On Lions. Please follow us on Twitter at Derry Speaks at Locked On Lions. We're on threads at The Real Matt Derry. Matt Derry Facebook fan page. If you're a Facebook person, that's where we post the pod each and every day. And of course, we got about 6,500 subscribers and counting on our Locked On Lions YouTube channel. Please subscribe and watch for free right there on our Locked On Lions YouTube channel. Coming up on the show today, Stephen Gilmore versus Starling Thomas. This might be the most intriguing training camp battle for a roster spot that you'll find during the preseason. I mean, we know who a lot of the starters are going to be. Yes, we got to see if Julian O'Quara makes the team. Aaron Glenn made some comments the other day. Didn't sound too good. We've got to see about the linebackers, right guard, all these things. But Thomas versus Gilmore could get interesting at cornerback. I will explain coming up momentarily here on Locked On Lions. We have an update on Shane Zilstra, Dan Campbell, a none too pleased with Khalil Dorsey from Monday. We'll get into that. An incredible story by Kyle Mikey at M Live on Romeo Aquara. And also, we got to get into a Jamison Williams. A bounce back day uh, up at 222, a Rod Wood drive today. All of that today on a Wednesday Locked On Lions, which today is brought to you by FanDuel Sportsbook, official sportsbook of the NFL. Make every moment more. Visit fanduel.com slash locked on today to get started. And of course, we got to give a shout out as well to our friends at Marg's Sparkling Margaritas. I'm going to do the read in a second, but yes. Woohoo! Look at that, YouTubers. I got my case of margs right here. We'll let you know about them coming up momentarily right here on Locked On Lions. All right, uh, where to start? You know, Jamison Williams bounce back. We can get to uh, all of these things, but there's a theme starting to develop uh, down in Allen Park with the secondary. We know this. Emmanuel Mosley today, the free agent pickup from the Niners and all of that, uh, Mosley was put on the physically unable to perform list. He's back with the team. So he's placed on Pup uh, as he comes back from the torn ACL. He's not 100% yet. It's going to be a while before uh, Mosley comes back, but they put him on Pup today. That means that there's an open cornerback spot, and, and it's possible that one of these young kids and these UD, UDFAs, Starling Thomas out of UAB and Stephen Gilmore out of Marshall, one of the two might make the team. You know, we know the Lions have, uh, Cam Sutton and Jerry Jacobs and Will Harris and Savion Smith and uh, Chase Lucas and C.J. Gardner-Johnson. They, they are stacked at cornerback and Mosley. And they feel very good about where they are in their secondary. But you can never have enough corners. And we know with Brad Holmes, he has found rando corners off the street that have performed for this team. A.J. Parker was not terrible. Bobby Price had to play and was decent. Jerry Jacobs, an undrafted free agent rookie, has come into his own as one of the better corners on this team. And now it looks like, it appears, that the magic of Brad Holmes has unearthed a couple of things. Stephen Gilmore, six foot out of Marshall, went undrafted. Stephon Gilmore's little brother, 23 years of age, has had a really good camp. Anybody I've talked to has said number 36 looks like he belongs, which is great. Finding an undrafted free agent cornerback and develop, developing them on the cheap and everything else uh, is always a positive. But he's also being pushed by Starling Thomas. He of the Jamison Williams uh, punch attempt in the helmet on Monday. Thomas isn't afraid to get kind of dirty out there. Uh, five foot ten out of UAB, not the greatest of speed. Uh, didn't get drafted when everybody thought he'd be a late round pick because maybe just maybe he doesn't have great technique or ball skills and all these things, but 
these two kids, Gilmore and Thomas, have really stepped up and have been a real positive for this organization. And again, you know, when you're trading draft picks, when you're moving things around, when you know you identify that only 14 players on your board, as we saw on that Inside the Den show, the Lions didn't think much of this draft. <laughs> they had 14 guys identified in the first as, as really first rounders in their eyes out of 32, and they ended up getting three of those players with their first three picks, Jameer Gibbs, Jack Campbell, and Sam Laporta. So the Lions didn't look at this draft like, oh, this is a great draft. And here are a couple of kids at cornerback, which is a premium position in the NFL. A couple of kids that went undrafted. Stephon Gilmore's little brother, Stephen, had a pretty good career in the conf in Conference USA. He was like all league as a sophomore. All right. And when you have the Gilmore last name, you're probably, it's going to help you, give you pedigree to get drafted. Didn't. Starling Thomas um, from UAB, same type of thing. Like a lot of people thought, late round pick. Didn't get the call. Uh, played in the East-West Shrine game. So NFL teams were, were, were on him. They saw him. But now with the Lions, one of these two guys during training, uh, during, I'm sorry, the preseason, if you're going to watch the preseason games, all right, and preseason football sucks, all right, first one's August 11th, and it's coming up in a couple of, next week, next uh, Friday, no one's going to want it. The practices with the Giants next week are going to be more intriguing, okay, than the, actual game but watch 36 watch 41 and see what they do it's something to keep an eye on because one of those two kids might make the team it's been a good battle so far and it continues to be here in training camp they've made plays they've been physical they've gotten into some skirmishes um some pushing and shoving and they've shown that they they might just be two guys uh that that we'll look back upon in a couple of years and go, man, Brad Holmes stole, stole these guys. So that's a positive. You can never have enough cornerbacks. So that's number one uh, on today's list. Um, as far as the Shane Zilstra situation, I'm not going to go too crazy on this, but Dan Campbell explained that the backup, the backup tight end, man, my voice keeps cracking today. This is like old school DFN uh, with my voice cracking. Um, Dan Campbell said today he's, he's upset. Uh, they've addressed it with Khalil Dorsey, another uh, undrafted kid uh, trying to make the team in the secondary, who kind of low-bridged Shane Zelstra. It was a clean hit to his knee. But something you don't do in training camp is low-bridge and go for the knees. Sometimes it's a good hit when it's legal in a game, but not in training camp. You don't do it. And a lot of guys got on Dorsey for doing it, and he was reprimanded by the coaching staff. But Shane Zolstra is going to be out for the season, all right, with what appears to be either an MCL or ACL injury. And Dan Campbell said today that was preventable, should not have happened, and talk to the player about it, right? They didn't just go off and cut the kid, which I like, um, which they could have done. It's a teaching moment for him, but they're disappointed for Shane Zilstra because they thought he'd be an asset in the tight end room. So that leaves the lines, of course, like we said yesterday, with Sam Laporta, James Mitchell. And a Brock Tober, Brock Wright. Also today, the Lions signed two players: Daryl Daniels, former tight end in Arizona with the Cardinals, who has experience with former Cardinals tight ends coach Steve Hein, or Steve Hyden, excuse me, not Steve Hein, Steve Hyden, uh, who's now the Lions tight ends coach, and of course was an NFL tight end with Cardinals, the Browns, and others. Uh, so he's got some familiarity there. And also a Daniel Helm, no, not Darren Helm. Uh, there's an old bit. Uh, Daniel Helm, ex of the USFL's Memphis Showboats. Those two kids were signed today uh, as possibilities uh, for backup tight end and tight end depth. But uh, kind of disappointing, Shane Zilstra's injury was something that was caused by one of his teammates. All right, coming up next uh, on the program, we got to get into Jamison Williams' bounce back day. And also, this story about Romeo Quara from Kyle Mikey at MLive.com was absolutely fantastic. It was really, really good. We'll get to that as well coming up today, a little bit later on right here on Locked On Lions. And we're brought to you today by our friends at FanDuel. Baseball season in full swing. We'll turn the page to August. Hey, you know, you know, you know the Tigers are going to be buyers next year. That's what they always say this time of year, right? Oh, no, next year we're going to be buyers. 
Um, but the trade deadline is done. Now we're you know, looking at the dog days a little bit. But you want to put it some, some money down on baseball? You want to bet on uh, the Tigers or whoever's playing the Tigers or whatever? No better place to get out on the action than FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Because right now, new customers get a no-sweat first bet up to $1,000. That's up to $1,000 back in bonus bets if your first bet doesn't win. Just go to FanDuel.com slash LockedOn to join today. What, two nights away, or maybe it's tomorrow night? The uh, Hall of Fame game in Canton? Browns and Jets? Come on. Football's back and you want to be betting on the Hall of Fame game? Do it at FanDuel. Don't miss your chance to snag that no-sweat first bet up to $1,000 when you join FanDuel today. Just go to FanDuel.com slash LockedOn to sign up. FanDuel, official partner of the Lockdown Podcast Network and Major League Baseball. All right, so great story in today's MLive.com. And this is one where I'd like to say that I'm going to be seriously rooting for a certain Lions player. Look, we're all rooting for the Lions players to do well. We all have our favorite players, our least favorite players, whatever it is. But Romeo Quara uh, tore, uh, tore his Achilles in October of 2021 and did not come back until November of last year. And we were kind of wondering, what's taking so long? Now, with an Achilles or even an ACL with some guys, it's eight months, some guys it's 12 months. It depends on the situation. But the Lions kept it very, very hush-hush and quiet on why Romeo wasn't progressing quicker. Turns out in today's MLive.com by Kyle Mikey, he wrote an incredible piece sitting down with Romeo Quara. He did this a couple of weeks ago at Romeo's house on the lake up I-94 uh, here in Detroit, or I don't know what city uh, Kyle didn't specify, but it's a great story because what Romeo explains is that after five months, right after surgery, and our buddy, the executive producer is like to say, Nathan Litke pointed this out on Twitter as well, that this happened to him, tore his Achilles, surgery went on. It didn't work. It didn't work. And this has happened before. Not saying Lions doctors screwed it up, not say, whatever. He got a second opinion after five months when he wasn't still feeling like he could walk and wasn't feeling right. And the doctor in California, the second opinion doctor said, uh-oh, Romeo, you're going to have to have the surgery again. And so Romeo was pissed. He was swearing, all these things. Turns out, had to have a second surgery and could not come back until 13 months. So basically he missed most of 2021, because the injury happened in October in Chicago, and then 2022 didn't come back until November in that game against the Jets. So, you know, portions, large portions of two seasons were lost for the Lions' highest paid defensive player, their best pass rusher, um, after getting three years and $39 million, and a guy that is beloved in that locker room and respected. And so Romeo Quara kind of talks about in the article how difficult it was for him. Uh, talked about how he's a Grateful Dead fan and he was listening to music and he's got this, this house and he just, you know, takes his time every day to kind of be grateful for where he's at, wants to finish his career here, but was bummed out that he ever, hasn't been able to get back on the field. And for the first time now in three years almost, feels healthy, feels good, wants to get back to the form that we saw him perform in with double digit sacks. In what, 2020? So it's a great story. Go to MLive.com. I know I tweeted it out too as well today. Kyle did a really good job talking about how, two people aren't talking about Romeo anymore. James Houston's the, the hot six-round flash with the eight sacks last year. Aiden Hutchinson was rookie of the year runner-up. Charles Harris has had better years since Romeo's played a full season. They're talking about him, Kaminsky and Pascal. And, and, People are forgetting about Romeo, and he wants to kind of go out and prove this season he's healthy, he's ready to rock, ready for a double-digit sack year, and uh, feels good. And so it's a great story. Talks about how excited he is to be back, but that's a guy to keep an eye on because really he's missed a good chunk of the last two years, and you feel bad for, Again, it wasn't intentionally done by doctors. It wasn't a, a bad job. It was just a surgery that just did not work. They needed to do another one. And if five months into the first surgery afterwards, he just, it was a bummer for him that he could not perform and do the job that uh, uh, 
um, you know, he wanted to do, which is get out and play football. So I'm rooting for Romeo Quarrel. Be interesting to see what happens to his brother Julian. Aaron Glenn says they need to see more. You know, he he's not getting as many reps with the first or even the second unit um than he has in the past. And he could be a he could be a, a casualty of this roster. So the Oquara brothers, it's an interesting um situation with both, but I'm I'm rooting for Romeo. I, I hope he gets back, is healthy, and has a really good year. I'm excited to see that. All right, speaking of getting back, yesterday we pointed out that at Monday's practice, maybe it was Monday we pointed out, Jamison Williams had a rough day. Rough day trying to catch the football. Four drops. A little bit of a spat with Starling Thomas. Back with a vengeance today was Jamison Williams. We'll have more on that coming up next. Shout out to our everydayers, those of you that uh, watch or listen each and every day right here on Lockdown Lions. We appreciate you. Can we get to 7,000 subscribers on YouTube? Can we do that in the next couple of weeks? Yeah, I'm doing a little ask here for my audience. Uh, that would be fantastic. So uh, tell your friends about us. Uh, we're here each and every day and uh, excited for this season for sure when it comes to Lockdown Lions. Look, you know me. I have not been easy on Jamison Williams. I know he's a rookie or he's a second year kid. He's young a little bit immature, has made some mistakes on and off the field. Jamison Williams Monday, and I said this, bounced back Monday at the end of practice to throw a key block on a Jameer Gibbs long run. And as Williams said after practice on Monday, no block, no rock. That's Ben Johnson's rule. Like the receivers have to block. Speaking of receivers, by the way, Trinity Benson was carted off today. We'll have an update on that tomorrow. But Jamison Williams didn't, you know, didn't sulk. He stayed with the practice on Monday, but still had a bunch of drops. And a bunch of people that were there told me it was not a good day for him. Well, today, he was lighting it up. First play from scrimmage and seven-on-sevens golf. Throws a deep ball down the right sideline. And uh, Jamison Williams beats two defenders, including Chauncey Gardner-Johnson, who was late coming over, and made the play. He had a really good day of practice today. And Dan Campbell made it a point today to say, too, look, this kid is going to play a ton in the preseason. Right. Normally, you hold out your best players. And again, I'm not saying Jamison Williams is definitely one of the Lions' best players, but he's somebody, when he comes back from that gambling suspension in Week 7, that is going to play a lot. And today, he had a really good day of practice. And that's great to, it's great to see. He's going to be a big part of what this team does. There is not a, you know, other than maybe Jameer Gibbs, who's getting a lot more reps as a receiver than he ever had gotten in college, Jamison Williams is going to be a big part of this offense. They're going to need that deep threat, that speed on the outside to just open things up in the middle of the field for St. Brown and Jones and certainly Laporta and others. And so to, to hear that he turned some heads today and had a really good day is huge. It is. Um, I know Calvin Johnson is back with the Lions and in their good graces. I have not seen him yet come out to training camp and work with Jamison Williams. I know it's been a work in progress to get Calvin back in the good graces. I even saw a picture of Calvin high-fiving, or maybe it was a handshake, uh, Rod Wood, which we know Rod was one of the big reasons why Calvin said, screw this organization years ago. But I would love it if, if, if maybe while he's suspended, Jamison Williams gets to work with Calvin Johnson. Maybe they've worked on the side and we don't know about it. But I know Calvin has not exactly been a practice a lot working with, with JMO yet. I think well, once that happens, that would be that would be great. And by the way, I made a mistake the other day, and I apologize for this. I didn't hear the full question. Ross Tucker was asking me on Monday, we had Ross on the show, if Williams could practice. And my answer was yes, because I thought what he was asking me was, can he practice now and during uh, preseason? What he was asking was, can he practice while he's suspended? The answer is no. When he's suspended, he has to be away from all team activities. So I misspoke the other day and I apologize for that. But look, when JMO does something good, it's up to me too, hosting this podcast to also tell you when he has a good day. And uh, he did today. So that is, uh, that's pretty cool. Um, you know, Jared Goff, we talked about being a tier three quarterback yesterday. He, think about, he'll blow up tier two this year if Jamison Williams is the real deal and the guy that, you know, Everybody thought he was going to be coming out of Alabama. And one of the reasons why the Lions moved up in the first round last year to take him. But 
unfortunately, again, he won't play until week seven. So that does kind of suck. All right, we're back again tomorrow with a Thursday edition of Locked On Lions. Thanks for uh, checking us out wherever you get your podcasts and making us your first listen. Uh, we are back, like I said, again tomorrow right here on Locked On Lions. I want you to enjoy. Oh, I screwed this up. Did I not? I just kept talking. Man, that is a terrible job by me. I just kept going and did not tell you about Margs. Do you remember this? I told you this earlier. Margs, sparkling margaritas, all right? I would usually do the live read and read you the script right now, but I'm not doing that. What I'm going to do instead is show you this beautiful box that I got from Nino's on Hall Road, Hall and Romeo Plank the other day. Margs, sparkling margaritas are the drink of the summer. You got yourself your, uh, you can get yourself this, this beautiful eight pack with two mango, two classic, two coconut sparkling margaritas, which are my favorite, and the two spicy margaritas, which are right here. All right. No, I'm not going to sing you the margarita song on TikTok, but I am going to tell you that these are fantastic. They're better than high noons. They're better than these other jabroni drinks. Margs are amazing. Check them out. Go to sip, sipmargs.com, sipmargs.com to find a retailer near you. You must be 21 years or older, of course, to drink or to purchase Margs, but they are fantastic. I'm giving them some love. That'll do it for us today, right here on Locked On Lions. We appreciate you checking us out. Now you can watch this beautiful, if you're watching on YouTube, outro.